Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the webinar provided by Ansolib, EFAS Environment, Sustainability, and Library Sections. It's the 11th one in the Ansolib's webinar series. Good to see you all again. Our every webinar brings you a different theme from a different geographical location. Today's webinar is from India, about the walking librarians in Korea. Hope you enjoy it. My name is Priscilla Poon from University of Macau Library. I'm the secretary of Ansolib, co-facilitating today along with Andonia Makata from the University of Sydney Library, who is the information coordinator of Ansolib. Before we begin, let me start with some notes on privacy and administration. This webinar is being recorded but only for the intro and main overview by the speaker. The video will be posted on YouTube and the link will be posted on Ansolib's webpage, as well as on other social media. Microphones have been muted for this event. If you have any questions or comments, please type into the chat or Q&A box. If you have any questions regarding privacy, please send an email to professional support at EFA. .org. And now we are pleased to invite Andonia to introduce about the speakers and the webinar. Hi, everybody. I'm Antonia Makata, the Information Coordinator for NCLib, and I'm also the Director of Central Services at the University of Sydney Library. I'm co-hosting this webinar with Priscilla. In today's session, we will embark on a captivating journey in The Walking Librarians of Kerala, a tale of empowering women and the elderly woven into the fabric of the UN SDG goals. We'll delve into the remarkable story of Kerala, a state in India with the highest literacy rate and a distinguished quality of life index to explore how the Walking Librarians Initiative has further enriched this educational landscape, contributing to the empowerment of women and the elderly. Now I'll introduce our speakers. Dr. Siamili C is an assistant professor at the Department of Library and Information Science at Calicut University with a master's degree from Calicut University and a doctoral degree from the Pondicherry Central University. She has a postdoctoral fellowship from the Department of Library and Information Science, Alagappa University in Tamil Nadu. Her current research explores the digital divide among tribes in South India during the COVID-19 pandemic. She also focuses on areas such as the semantic web, ontology, indigenous knowledge preservation, and inclusive learning. Our second speaker today is Ms. Husna KT, who has completed her master's degree at the Department of Library and Information Science at the University of Calicut in Kerala. Her academic background includes a degree in history, and she is a keen, has a keen interest in the history of information, indigenous knowledge, and archival and preservation of knowledge. So now I'm going to hand over to Dr. Siamili to take us through the presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Antonio and Priscilla, for the warm welcoming. And a very good afternoon, everyone around the world. And uh, today, me, uh, along with my co-scholar, Husna, coming with a small story of Kerala, uh, which happening here for the last 17 years about the walking librarians in Kerala. So uh, in this session, we are discussing what is happening in Kerala with this e uh, effort of walking librarians uh, for the last 17 years and how it uh, helped the society uh, in developing in terms of gender equality, uh, community engagement, and social improvement. So let us start the session. Next, please. Uh, for today's the agenda of the session is we will be starting with Kerala and the library history, and what is the uh, book distribution project and how it works in the Kerala. Uh, the research questions and what are the key inquiries of our research, the methodology, and how the walking li uh, librarian, this program working, what is the style of the program, the work distribution, book delivery process, the customers and salary support, and the community engagement of the program, and also how it aligns with the UN's SDG goals. So 
let us go directly into the presentation next so uh, coming to the kerala which is one of the tiniest states in india uh, which shows highest literacy rates and a uh, highest quality like in terms of life indexes so when we look at the map we can see that we have we have 8495 public libraries in this tiny state uh, which is number 1 in terms of library density in india so uh, in the context of kerala the libraries are more than more than a just repositories of book uh, its libraries are working as, as a hubs of learning community engagement and social empowerment so compared to other states we have higher literacy rates a commendable reduction in the crime rates uh, a very main uh, highly maintained public health and these all positive outcomes cannot be uh, achieved without the help of this library culture so when we look at the history of the library movement in kerala we can see that uh, the movement has very uh, the library movement has been very instrumental in promoting the progressive political thought scientific timber and enhanced the uh, quality life in quality life indexes in kerala oh, next slide so when we look at the history of kerala uh, the library history start with in 1829 uh, were a public library tiruvannamburam public library established under the patronage of swadhi tirunal the maharaja of travancore which was started 7 years before when the national library started in india and in 1945 the first library conference happened in ernakulam under the leadership of p n panikkar who was known as the father of library in kerala so uh, when we look at the history we can see that the library movement is kerala which is intervening with the national progressive movements in the country so during the british empire period uh, the freedom fighters and the movement was mainly happened in connected with the libraries in the kerala and also uh, reading programs the night classes for illiterates happen in kerala so when we look at the library movement all the events are renaissance are totally connected with the library history of kerala in 1989 public library act happened and in 1994 kerala state library council was instituted which was a huge milestone in the history of library movement in kerala next so looking at the functioning of state library council in kerala state library council working in three session one was state library council under district library councils are working and taluk library councils are working and the libraries are graded into five category a plus a b c d e and f based on the criteria standards and specification so the funding will be allotted to the library based on these situations based on the working or the annual report of the activities they conducted in the year so the grading also given based on this performance of the libraries so next uh, so uh, overall when it comes to kerala the reading or the libraries are a part of our culture and the uh, library activities or uh, libraries more more or less acting as a social hub of cultural in that interaction showcasing exhibitions film festivals discussion debate so everything happening in and around the libraries so uh, the morning discussions old people everybody is uh, attached to some of the library in their area so that is the culture of library as a beginning of the story we should mention next slide so coming to the prestigious book distribution project of, for women and elderly uh this is a prestigious project of kerala state library council and uh in the picture we are seeing kp radhamani who is a walking librarian from vayanad vayanad uh, is one of the uh, district which is the highest number of indigenous people so this program is actually based on addressing the rural women and the rural community in kerala uh, next slide please so when we look at the history of this project the project started in 1997 with the help of state library council and 
as it evolves, uh, there are several number of walking librarians join the program and several activities areas were increased. Earlier, it was under the grade A libraries and later on the number were increased. The pro prospects were increased during COVID-19 also. Uh, there are several add-ons to the program. In 2023, after completing 17 years of the program, the program is about to wind up. So this study at this juncture, we are planning to study how the 17 year program worked in Kerala society. Next slide. So uh, this initiative is actually aimed at providing the books and reading material for the women, elderly, disabled uh, people in Kerala. Uh, so the, it was started in 1997 and the, it was spread to 50 libraries after uh, during the pro golden jubilee of Indian independence. And the program is still going on and providing reading facility to women, senior citizens, old aged, or anybody who are not able to come to library to get the books. Next. So the primary objective of the program, which is we call Vanida Vayojaka Pustaka Vidharana Paddadi in our regional language, uh, the, obje the primary objective of the study is, uh, primary objective of the program is to promote the literacy, knowledge, intellectual engagement among the women and elderly citizens. So by making books easily accessible to these groups, the project aims to empower and enhance the overall well-being of the community. Next slide. So uh, what we found is during the process, we identified that though it is happening for the last 17 years, there was no much documentation of the project and how it impacted the society, uh, what is the outcomes of the program and how it's developed over, over the years. So there was no uh, documentation on this. So next slide. So uh, through the study, we are planning to document how the study impacted the society and how it connected with the SDG goals. So here we have a small video of K.P. Radhamani, who is a walking librarian from Kerala. And instead of telling how this works, it will be better to share the, share the life of a walking librarian one day in her life. So we can move to the small documentation. ഒരു ദേശത്തിൻ്റെ സാമൂഹിക ആരോഗ്യത്തിൻ്റെ സൂചകങ്ങളാണ് വായനശാലകൾ മനുഷ്യൻ്റെ സർവോന്മുഖമായ വളർച്ചയുടെ തത്വസംഹിതകളായി അവ നിലനിൽക്കുന്നു വായനശാല പ്രസ്ഥാനത്തിൻ്റെ സാമൂഹിക സമ്പർക്കമാണ് കേരളത്തിൻ്റെ നവോത്ഥാന വളർച്ചയുടെ ശിഖരങ്ങളായത് ആധുനിക വിവര സാങ്കേതികതയുടെ കാലത്തും ഒരു ജൈവരൂപമെന്ന പോലെ അവ നിലനിൽക്കുന്നു എന്നതിന് കരുത്തുകൂടിയാണ് നമ്മുടെ പല അതിജീവനങ്ങളും വൈജ്ഞാനിക അടിത്തറയും കേരള ലൈബ്രറി കൗൺസിലിന്റെ വാക്കിംഗ് ലൈബ്രറി എന്ന ആശയം സാമൂഹിക മുന്നേറ്റമായി പരിവർത്തനപ്പെടുത്തിയതിൽ ഒട്ടേറെ മനുഷ്യരുടെ നിതാന്ത പരിശ്രമത്തിന്റെ പശ്ചാത്തലമുണ്ട് വയനാട് മൊതക്കരയിലെ നിശബ്ദ വായനാ വിപ്ലവത്തിന്റെ പേരാവുന്നു കെ പി രാധാമണി ഞാനിത് വീടുകളിൽ എത്താൻ തുടങ്ങിയവരോ എല്ലാം എൻ്റെ വായനക്കാരായി എല്ലാവരും അംഗത്വം എടുത്ത് കൃത്യമായിട്ട് വായിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ കൃത്യമായി അവിടെ എത്തിച്ചു കൊടുത്ത് അവരുടെ മുമ്പിൽ എത്തിക്കഴിയുമ്പോൾ അവർക്ക് തിരഞ്ഞെടുക്കാൻ പാകത്തിന് ഞാൻ ബുക്കുകൾ കൊണ്ടുപോകും അവർ തിരഞ്ഞെടുക്കും രണ്ട് ബുക്ക് വീതം അവർക്ക് കൊടുക്കും ചിലപ്പം മൂന്ന് നാലും ബുക്ക് എടുക്കും പിന്നെ കുട്ടികൾക്ക് പഠിക്കാനുള്ള ആവശ്യത്തിനുള്ള ബുക്കുകൾ കൊണ്ട കുട്ടികൾക്ക് ചെയ്താനും അതിനും ഇതിനും ഒക്കെ ഉള്ള ബുക്കുകൾ പഠിക്കേണ്ട ബുക്കുകൾ കൊണ്ട കൊടുക്കുമ്പോൾ അവർക്കത് വളരെ പ്രയോജനപ്രദമാണ് പിന്നെ പിന്നെ അത് ഉറങ്ങാൻ വായിച്ചിട്ട് വായിച്ചില്ലല്ലോ ഉറക്ക് വരാത്ത ഒരു സംഭവത്തിലേക്ക് എത്തി അത് അങ്ങനെ തുടർന്ന് പോയി അഞ്ചാം ക്ലാസ്സിൽ പഠിക്കുമ്പം എൻ്റെ ലൈബ്രറി ബുക്ക് വീടുകൾ ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ ജനിച്ചതും വളർന്നതും ഒക്കെ കോട്ടയം ജില്ലയിലാണ് വാഴൂർ എൻ എസ് എസ് സ്കൂളിലാണ് ഞാൻ പഠി പഠിച്ചത് 
അപ്പോൾ അവിടുന്ന് സ്കൂളിൽ അഞ്ചാം ക്ലാസ്സിൽ പഠിക്കുമ്പോൾ ആഴ്ച തോറും നമുക്ക് ലൈബ്രറി ബുക്ക് എല്ലാ ക്ലാസ്സിലും കൊണ്ടുവരുന്ന കൊടുക്കും അപ്പോൾ ആ ബുക്ക് ശനി വെള്ളിയാഴ്ച കിട്ടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അത് വായിച്ചിട്ട് തിരിച്ച് പിറ്റേയാഴ്ച നമ്മൾ പിറ്റേ വെള്ളിയാഴ്ച കൊണ്ട് കൊടുത്താൽ മതി അപ്പോൾ അന്നേരം എൻ്റെ അച്ഛൻ തീരെ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസം ഇല്ലാത്ത ആളായിരുന്നു അപ്പോൾ ഇത് ഈ കഥകളൊക്കെ ആയിരിക്കും ഇത് ഞാൻ അച്ഛന് വായിച്ച് കേൾപ്പിക്കും അച്ഛന് നല്ല താല്പര്യം അച്ഛനും പഠിത്തമില്ലാത്ത ആളാണല്ലോ പിന്നെ അങ്ങനെ വായിച്ച് കേൾപ്പിച്ച് പിന്നെ പീഡിയം എന്നൊക്കെ എന്തെങ്കിലും കടലാസുകളൊക്കെ കൊണ്ടുവന്ന അതെല്ലാം ഞാനിങ്ങനെ വായിക്കാൻ തുടങ്ങി അപ്പോൾ അത് ആ വായനയിലൊരു താല്പര്യം എനിക്ക് എൻ്റെ അച്ഛനിലൂടെയാണ് വന്നത് അച്ഛൻ ചോദിക്കും ചില ആഴ്ചയിൽ പുസ്തകം കിട്ടിയിട്ടില്ലെങ്കിൽ പുസ്തകം ഇല്ലേ എന്ന് ചോദിക്കാറുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനെ ഒരു വായനാശീലം വന്നു അറുപത്തി അഞ്ച് പിന്നിട്ട രാധാമണിയുടെ ജീവിതം തുടരുന്ന അധ്യായങ്ങളുള്ള ഒരു പുസ്തകമാണ് സുസ്ഥിര ഗ്രാമവികസന പദ്ധതികളുടെ ഭാഗമായും അംഗൻവാടി അധ്യാപികയായും ടൂറിസം ഗൈഡായും വാക്കിംഗ് ലൈബ്രറിയനുമായുമെല്ലാം അവർ ജീവിച്ചു പോന്നു അതിസാധാരണമായ സാഹചര്യങ്ങളിൽ നിന്ന് മറ്റുള്ളവരെ സദാ പ്രചോദിപ്പിക്കുന്ന പ്രകാശിക്കുന്ന ജീവിതമായി അത് തുടരുകയാണ് രണ്ടായിരത്തി പന്ത്രണ്ടിലാണ് ലൈബ്രറി കൗൺസിലിന്റെ പ്രതിഭാ വായനശാലയുടെ വാക്കിംഗ് ലൈബ്രറിയനായി രാധാമണി ചുമതലയേൽക്കുന്നത് വനിതകളെയും കുട്ടികളെയും കണ്ടെത്തി പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ നൽകുകയായിരുന്നു കർത്തവ്യം എണ്ണൂറ് രൂപ ശമ്പളത്തിൽ ജോലി തുടങ്ങി പതിയെ അവരുടെ ജീവിതം തന്നെ പുസ്തകങ്ങൾക്കൊപ്പമായി പ്രതിഭാ വായനശാലയിൽ നിന്ന് ഓരോ മാസവും അഞ്ഞൂറ് പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ തനിക്കരികിലുള്ള ലോകത്തേക്ക് അവർ വിതറിയിട്ടുകൊണ്ടിരുന്നു മെല്ലെ മൊതക്കരി എന്ന ഗ്രാമം വായനയിലേക്ക് മാറി കുട്ടികൾ പുതിയ പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ ആവശ്യപ്പെട്ടു സ്ത്രീകളുടെ ചർച്ചകളിൽ നജീബും ഉമ്മുക്കുത്സവുമെല്ലാം കടന്നു വരാൻ തുടങ്ങി കോവിഡ് കാലത്ത് അത് ചുരുങ്ങി അപ്പോഴും മുന്നൂറ് പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ വരെ അവർ ഓരോ മാസവും വീടുകളിലേക്ക് എത്തിച്ചു മൊതക്കരയിലെ ആദിവാസി വിഭാഗങ്ങൾക്കിടയിൽ ഇന്ന് പുസ്തകങ്ങൾക്ക് ആവശ്യക്കാരേറെയാണ് കുട്ടികളും കൂലിപ്പണിക്കാരായ സാധാരണക്കാരും വായനയെ ചേർത്തു പിടിക്കുന്നു ഇരുപത്തി അഞ്ച് രൂപയുടെ വരിസംഖ്യയിൽ അംഗങ്ങളായതാണ് അവർ പലരുടെയും വരിസംഖ്യ നൽകിയതും രാധാമണി തന്നെ എം കെ സാനു പറഞ്ഞത് പാല് എങ്ങനെ കുട്ടികൾക്ക് കൊടുക്കുന്നു അതുപോലെ വേണം പുസ്തകം നമ്മൾ കുട്ടികൾക്ക് കൊടുക്കാൻ ആവർത്തിക്കുന്നത് പാല് കുട്ടികൾക്ക് പോഷകാഹാരമായി നമ്മളൊന്നും കൊടുക്കൂലേ അതേ അളവിൽ കുട്ടികൾക്ക് അതേപോലെ തന്നെ പുസ്തകം കൊടുക്കണമെന്ന് എം കെ സാനു അദ്ദേഹം പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ആഴത്തിലുള്ള വായന വായന പലതരത്തിലുണ്ടെന്നാണ് പറയുന്നത് വായന മരിക്കുന്നു എന്ന് പറയുന്നുണ്ട് പക്ഷെ ഇതൊന്നുമില്ല വായനയുടെ പല തലങ്ങളിലേക്ക് നമ്മളെ കൊണ്ടെത്തിക്കും മാനസികമായ ഒരു ഉണർവ് വരെ നമ്മൾ ഞാൻ തന്നെ ചില സമയങ്ങളിൽ എന്തെങ്കിലും ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുകളോ പ്രയാസങ്ങളൊക്കെ മനുഷ്യനിൽ ഉണ്ടാവുമല്ലോ ആ സമയത്ത് ഇരിക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ പുസ്തകം വായിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ പുസ്തകം വായിച്ചിട്ട് ഞാൻ കരഞ്ഞ സമയങ്ങൾ ചിരിച്ച സമയങ്ങളും ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ അത് നമ്മളെ ആ അതിൽ നിന്ന് ആ വിഷമങ്ങളിൽ നിന്ന് നമ്മളെ മാറ്റും അതാണ് എനിക്ക് പുസ്തകം കൊണ്ട് പോകുന്നതിൽ എൻ്റെ പ്രയാസങ്ങളും എനിക്ക് ഒരുപാട് മാറിക്കിട്ടും എല്ലാവരും കാണുവും പിന്നെ ഓരോരുത്തർക്ക് ഇത് തിരഞ്ഞെടുത്ത് കൊടുക്കും അവർ തിരഞ്ഞെടുക്കും പിന്നെ ഞാൻ തന്നെ പറയും ഇത് നല്ല പുസ്തകമാണ് നിങ്ങൾ ഇത് എടുക്കും എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് കൊടുക്കുമ്പോൾ അവർക്കും അതൊരു തൃപ്തിയാണ് എത്ര തിരക്കായാലും അവർ പുസ്തകം ചിലപ്പോൾ ഒന്നും ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ പറയും നിങ്ങൾ രണ്ട് പുസ്തകം അവിടെ വെച്ച് പൊക്കും എന്ന് പറയും അത് എന്തെങ്കിലും തിരക്കിലാണെങ്കിൽ അങ്ങനെ എന്നാൽ ആരും വേണ്ടാന്ന് പറയാറില്ല രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തി ഒന്ന് ഒക്ടോബർ മാസത്തോടെ വാക്കിംഗ് ലൈബ്രറിയൻ എന്ന ചുമതലയിൽ നിന്ന് രാധാമണി ഒഴിഞ്ഞു എന്നാൽ ഇക്കാലം അത്രയുമുള്ള അനുഭവങ്ങളുടെ ശേഷിപ്പുകളായി തൻ്റേതായുള്ള പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ അവർ ഇപ്പോഴും വിതരണം ചെയ്തു വരികയാണ് ഇതിനിടെ പത്ത് വർഷങ്ങൾ അവർ പിന്നിട്ടിരുന്നു അറുപതിനായിരം തവണയെങ്കിലും അവർ പുസ്തകങ്ങൾ നൽകുകയും തിരിച്ചു വാങ്ങുകയും ചെയ്തു അതിനവർ സഞ്ചരിച്ച ദൂരവുമേറെയായിരുന്നു പത്ത് വർഷത്തെ ആ പുസ്തക ജീവിതം കഴിഞ്ഞുവെങ്കിലും ഈ ദേശക്കാർ ഇന്നും രാധാമണിയെ കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നു നിറയെ പുസ്തകങ്ങളുമായി ഇടവഴികളിലൂടെ കയറി വരുന്ന രാധാമണിയെ എന്ന പോലെ അവർക്ക് പരിചിതമായി ഈ ഗ്രാമത്തിൽ മറ്റൊരാളില്ല അവർ വിരിച്ചിട്ട പുസ്തക പൂക്കളാണ് ഈ വഴികളിലെ ചില്ലകളിലെല്ലാം വിടരുന്നത് available on internet so anybody can look at it we will share the link in the end of the session
from morning to evening uh, to the areas and people we can see as in the documentary people are waiting for her to get the books so that is the kind of uh, culture we are developing through this program so uh, in this project uh, my co scholar uh, sna is actually uh, did the field work of the research she was actually traveling with the women librarians from kerala and the prospects of the study the approach of the study and the working details of uh, working librarians she will be discussing so over to you husna thank you so the, this study aims to examine the experience of female librarians participating in a program that promotes reading among rural communities we will uh, analyze uh, analyze the impact and effectiveness of the program in encouraging uh, reading habits among rural residents also it will explore the involvement of women in the program and its alignment with un sustainable development goals next slide please the major research questions of the study are to identify the role of the women and elderly book distribution scheme in helping women in their livelihood and another one is that to study the effectiveness efficiency and impact of women and elderly book distribution scheme in developing the reading habits among the rural people in kerala and another one is to critically evaluate the women and elderly book distribution scheme and to study the problems and limitations of the program and to purpose the way and means for improving women and elderly book distribution scheme to ensure its outreach to women or old age disabled and children and the last but important to check how the un sustainable development goals and libraries align with the women and elderly distribution scheme of kerala next please the major methods used to collect data were unstructured interviews participant observation and telephonic interviews we uh, utilize the right to information act of india to gather contact information of women librarians from state library council of kerala uh, especially to get the contact information of women librarians in district and taluk library councils uh, for telephonic interviews we uh, used uh, unstructured questionnaire and another method used to collect data is participant observation and we travel with the subject to observe uh, their process in a whole day uh, which help to collect uh, details and photographs how uh, their uh, their book distribution uh, records and that uh, we travel with them for a whole day which help to gain more information and uh, their work process and next slide please Uh, the study uh, focus on the number of female librarians participating in the women and elderly book distribution program in kerala state there are 631 female librarians employed under the state library council of kerala uh, or they are working under the program uh, kerala state has 14 district and uh, for collecting the data we divided each district to uh, its strata and three or uh, four librarians were selected to interview and uh, this strata were chosen for interviews by using simple random sampling and also uh, women librarians were selected randomly for interviews in each strata the the snowball sampling also used for collecting data from one librarian to uh, one uh, to collect the contact information of another librarian of their strata Next slide, please. The major study variables used for the study is working style of women working librarians and work distributions, and the process of book delivery, and membership process of this program, and what are the assistance from the state library council for women and elderly book distribution program, and working librarians livelihood and impact on their social life, and social connections involved uh, during. the women and elderly book distribution program and role of the women and elderly book distribution scheme in developing reading habits among rural people and also difficulties and limitations of the women and elderly book distribution program next please uh, 
most of the participants in the e library program joined between 2006 and 2021. Uh, for various reasons, such as filling vacancies or covering for maternity leaves and responding to job opening. And uh, some of them joined because of their family recommendation or uh, their community leaders recommendation like that. Uh, they are uh, some, most of the librarians committed to the program for five to 12 years or they are uh, joined from uh, the start of the program. Some of them joined because of their uh, family or, or community influence. Some participants join the program from other options like teaching or work schools like that uh, to library work. And the program chooses its workers very carefully. Next slide, please. They look for people who are already involved in uh, helping others in the community. The library committee or other important people like uh, community president, or like that, help choose the right people for the job by uh, picking workers who are already known for helping others or who are already is actively participating in social community programs. Uh, they are uh, the program set itself uh, for up for success in the long long run. So this help to build a uh, trust with the community and keep things going smoothly. Uh, for the smooth running of the project, uh, the librarian should know the houses within the 100 meter radius of the library, as well as the places in the region, a region that area. Next slide, please. Uh, the, number, uh, the number of members varies in each section, leading to difference in the number of houses covered each day. Uh, librarians uh, typically cover uh, around 25 houses per day or selecting book from library based on members preference or and record details of uh, such as the register or like that uh, approximately 20 to 25 uh, books are taken for distribution each day uh, some some books uh, were written from uh, previous distributions and the state library council provides uh, bags for carrying books, but some librarians are uh, opting for uh, larger bags due to their weight on their shoulders. So they usually carry high end bags. And the, uh, most of the target groups are housewives or expected mothers, pensioners, but most of the targeted customers are elderly people. Uh, customers are required to pay 10 rupees to participate in the program, which is payable monthly. But most of them uh, are most of the librarians are not willing to the, pay the monthly fee. So women librarians, uh, librarians do not enforce it strictly, and membership is exclusively for women. In case uh, if a, a, a male um, the customer needs to have a specific uh, book reading habit, they have to take membership in their family or women in their family. A library distribution program must have minimum of 150 members. Members have the option to pay 60 rupees for a one-year membership or uh, a one-time fee of 1,000 rupees for a lifetime membership. Uh, customers can become library members or library members by paying 100 rupees or 1,000 rupees, allowing them to vote into library elections. Uh, this library elections uh, for library committee or the, their municipal library committee like that and the salary given by the state library uh, council is uh, 4120 with rs uh, with uh, 120 rupees deducted for funds uh, the salary is transferred to the district library council and then they distributed to the taluk library council and they paid two installments which is in six months and the uh, 24,000 rupees are given for them. Then additionally, the library provides, uh, library council provides uh, 1,500 rupees to uh, 1,700 rupees for cultural festivities of Steve of Kerala, which is on them, along with the book bag for carrying books. Next slide, please. And the book distribution of the process occurring on a six day schedule each week. They carry uh, different type of registers like uh, like issues register, room diary, book register, or membership register, and monthly fee register are 
Uh, they are used for tracking purpose. And the primary register utilized in is the issue register, particularly, particularly during book distribution. Some librarians conduct book deliveries on Sundays because uh, most of the individuals are home at uh, Mondays, uh, Sundays. That's why uh, working librarians are obligated to submit monthly report to the uh, Taluk Library Council and District Library Council. Next, please. Uh, most of the um, women librarians in the project are passionate about reading. They have been many. They have been many changes to librarians since they joined the program. And some most of the workers are retired people, or most of them are uh, taken back from society. Therefore, they found peace in the book distribution. Librarians said they could be a little more active in regional affairs as well as the. As well as with uh, books, many librarians have been in the project for uh, almost uh, from the starting, and local people know them very well. And most of the librarians are fond of the project, and they consider it as a service. Next, please. And I will hand it over to you. Shirley. Uh, so, coming to the walking librarians' livelihood and impact on their social life, uh, we actually added few interesting opinions from uh, our subjects. Uh, one of the subjects commented that housewives are the ones who are mostly involved in the project. People of different age, both young and retired, are participating. Those living in the houses are the majority. Living like this at home, People all have great liking for reading. The scheme is great source of encouragement for those living in the houses. And another one uh, who was a disabled commented that the disabled and elderly are highly enthusiastic about participating in the program. They are eager to learn about more events at the library. Next slide. So how uh, the program influenced the community's daily life and the librarian's opinion on human empowerment? We, uh, from, the, uh, from the conversation with the librarian, we found that most of those women librarians later elected in their local elections, they participated in social events and they have developed better leadership skill and quality. Uh, the majority of the participant resides in household and share a passion for reading while at home. The initiatives serve as a strong motivation motivator for individuals living in households. They have keen interest in reading among the people yet accessing library may not be, those people who are accessing library may not be convenient, but they are uh, passionately started reading. And uh, frequently, the, uh, the library frequently hosts events and participants will be notified about them during the book delivery. Nearly everyone attend this program. And uh, through reading new books, women acquire a wealth of information they previously did not possess. Most of the librarians believe that this project plays a pivotal role in empowering women through the act of reading. Next slide. So uh, all women librarians in the project are passionate about reading. There have been many changes to this uh, for their life after joining this program. Maybe they have a very uh, minute changes, but they had a positive changes. Some of the people who joined this program were retired workers. They found peace in book distribution. Librarians said they could be a little more active in regional affairs as well as with books. Uh, Many of these uh, working librarians for working for this for many years and people, local people know them very well. That's why most of the people who participate, worked as women librarian or working librarian later uh, participated in local elections, as I told earlier. So they formed the project uh, and they consider it as a service. So as we know, the amount or the remuneration are considerably very less. Uh, they were passionate and most of them consider it as a service. Next. So as we see, uh, as we saw it in the uh, documentary, the walking librarian developed a very uh, close connection with the society in which they work with. So uh, 
they are meeting the people day on daily basis there is a level of trust where they share both concerns share both concerns and joy if a librarian happens to take a day off uh, some members express their concerns once they finish reading a book they will call to request a new one uh, one of the librarian working librarian commented that when the students need to do some homeworks on demand they started supplying some books according to some the reports the program has significantly impacted the lives of certain members elderly participants feel a stronger connection to the librarian eagerly anticipating the book distribution some members have formed a deep bonds with the librarian considering them as a part of their family next slide so uh, here are few opinions uh, we received from the subject let us uh, take the first subject uh, providing books to household for a certain duration uh, for them it's feel like they are part of the household they confide in me sharing both their sorrows and joy if i happen to take a day off they express concern and occasionally even before i reach out they proactively inform me about the book they desire when everyone enjoys reading it i will gladly share the books they are searching for any time it's a wonderful bond that we share fostering a so strong positive relationship uh, another observation is that women prefer novels more than more and can choose from travelogues historical events and other books to read and another opinion is uh, we already mentioned this and can we move to the next slide and how uh, it developed the reading habits among rural people so as we know the reading habits are on the decline especially during pandemic uh, the number of books read by the community was increased up to a great extent especially in the rural area where the internet connections were weak or people were closed in their households so by the time the number of books uh, readers were increased and the number of books they read is also increased so elderly individuals often find themselves at home with little to occupy their time delivering books to them brings a great relief for them so they add a social connections and a better social life for the elderly people many housewives were avid readers in their youth librarians know their joy when they have the opportunity to revisit books from their past so the most of the individual having book delivered to their doorstep is a tremendous blessing according to the librarian men children and middle aged aged individuals have all rediscovered the joy of reading through this distribution scheme so in an era where the learning is increasingly prevalent uh, and books are more accessible some young people are forming stronger connection with reading as noted by librarian which is a very positive change uh, which a positive change put forwarded by this project next slide so uh, as we go through as we had done this 30 interviews with the working librarians we identified several problem and the first and uh, the major problem was the salary provided which is uh, completely insufficient to the workload and also uh, they were not paid the amount every month they were paid a lump sum amount in every six month which uh, which they cannot take it as a permanent job or they cannot trust on the money for their day to day life so that was a major concern of the program and the amount was comparatively very less compared to the workload they are taking so despite the low wage workers manage their responsibilities independently without encountering significant issues delivering books serve as an enjoyable activity for many workers offering them an ent entertainment for as we know many of the working librarians are retired professionals or they have another earnings so a one cannot trust purely on this activity for their uh, bread because this is not that much amount so those who are considering it as a service can find happiness in this job otherwise this financial uh, problem as insufficient funding is a major problem which is, uh, suffered by which opened by almost all the librarian and the climate changes of course in the regions as an another uh, barrier for the program so the work, they have to carry on their hands some, some people have their two wheelers but most of them were walking so the climate changes is an another difficulty opined by the users next slide so uh, 
with this point we are briefing how uh, the working and how the social uh, development like social engagement of this activity put forward it and in the second stage of the research uh, what we did is we extracted the expected outcomes of the program and we correlated this with the un sustainable development goals so as we know there are 17 sustainable development goals put forwarded by united nations with uh, so we are in the session analyzing how the uh, outcomes of this program is in align with the fabric of sdg goals so let's have a look on it next slide next so what we did is we actually analyzed the uh, observation we derived from the uh, analysis and we had a cross check with the 17 goals and we identified certain goals have a very strong relation to the uh, sdg goals and let us look at the goals one by one first uh, sdg 3 which is good health and well being so sdg 3 is closely related with the uh, this program let us consider few point one is mental health so coming to the mental health uh, reading has a very positive effect on mental health uh, it is reducing the stress anxiety and depression so providing access to the books and reading materials especially to the women and elderly uh, who are more susceptible to the social isolation or loneliness this program support their mental health and also when it comes to the cognitive health uh, considering the older adults uh, where they felt like the promoting literacy or providing the opportunities for intellectual stimulation promoted the cognitive health of the community and health education of course we know and the reading and the literacy are closely related uh, this this program definitely have an effect on health also during the pandemic the walking librarians were spreading uh, the health uh, vaccine detail vaccination details and the do's and don'ts do, during the pandemic so in that way also health education this program support the health education also and another point is social well being and and social connection and community engagement particularly for individuals who may be socially isolated or have limited opportunity for social interaction this program was a great help for them and the physical well being also uh, of the walking librarians who were walking six days a week which helped their physical well being and this act, this activity contributed to the physical fitness and overall well being of the society and con considering the access to healthcare information also which uh, aligns with the sdg 3 so in summary we can say that sdg 3 uh, is closely aligned with this program next slide coming to the sdg 4 quality education of course there are certain points which is closely aligned with this program to the education one is especially during pandemic as we uh, ex uh, like as we mentioned the case of kp radhamani she was working among the tribes so during pandemic most of the schools most of the tribal students or indigenous students were out of education by the time uh, access to education through library or the library books was provided by this program so uh, in that way it's related to sdg 4 literacy prom promotion lifelong learning inclusive education especially for it ensure the marginalized and underrepresented groups have access to the educational resources uh, and skill development so reading is actually not only enhances literacy skills but fostering th thinking uh, creativity problem solving ability and the main point is the community engagement so as we said uh, visiting a home uh, sharing the books and sharing the joy of reading sharing the stories of reading along with them they were developing as a community Uh, of is is creating a social space for women, especially maternal women or the educated women who were disconnected from the career or those who are taking career breaks. So this developed as a community engagement. They have WhatsApp groups were sharing the information or demanding particular groups. So in all these points, uh, this program is closely related with the Sustainable Development Goal Four, which is quality education. Next slide. Next slide. Gender equality. 
as we mentioned earlier uh, this program especially uh, addressing the women and the minorities or the uh, those who need care in the society this provided equal participation and representation as we know there was no rule like that working librarian should be woman but all the people around uh, more than half of the working librarians were women so by actively involving women as librarians and members the program challenges the traditional gender roles and promotes women's visibility and leadership in public spaces empowerment through education is another achievement of the program promotion of women rights is happening it's prioritizing women's access to educational resources services and program contribute to the breakdown of barriers uh, which prevent the women from fully exercising their rights or freedom and uh, in combating the stereotypes and discrimination uh, this program is challenging the stereotypes about women roles and capability and it's uh, uh, it's like combating the gender based discrimination and prejudice so the active involvement of libraries and readers the women and elderly demonstrate their intellectual curiosity their the agency and challenging the societal norms and in limit their potential inclusive and accessible services the vulnerable groups are addressed by this program and fostering supportive community so Uh, this program not only addressing a particular gender, all the gender minorities. So SDG five, we can say without any doubt that it's closely related to the program. Next SDG, which we found, which is closely aligned with this program, was SDG eight, decent work and economic growth. So as we see, uh, it provides employment opportunity. It provides empowerment through the work. Uh, financial empowerment is there also as we said most of this woman which is gradually moving into leadership positions or important roles in the society so this is empowering through their work and the promotion of entrepreneurship the women who take the leadership roles within the program uh, are later uh, which is started as a platform for entrepreneurship by fostering entrepreneurship skills and providing opportunities for women to lead and innovate the program contribute to the economic growth as well and skill development we earlier mentioned it's developed the skills the communication skill organizational skills and leadership skill and inclusive growth so we can say uh, it's closely related with the sdg h decent work and economic growth and next slide reduced inequalities and we as we know this provide equal access to resources and addressing the gender based disparity supporting the vulnerable groups and the community inclusion and the disparity in education so the main agenda of this program is actually addressing and it's very closely it's the agenda of the program was reducing the inequality and providing equal accessible to the resources to everyone so sdg 10 is closely addressing the program and the last slide is sdg next slide and it is uh, we have a spot type of rights like sdg 17 it's like partnership for the goals so we can say and the last sdg which is closely aligned with this is sdg 17 partnership for the goals so as we see uh, there is a collective effort of library resources the coordinators and the book distributors and the educationalists so this a collaborative stakeholders of different type of different domains are working together for a common goal so it provides a collaborative efforts and stakeholders engagement and cross sector collaborations are there from different sectors education healthcare community development all the sectors are working together knowledge sharing is happening this process resources mobilization and sustainable development so uh, this is these are the points which we identified from the sdg 70 if we are looking closely we can identify more connection with the sdg goals these are the few points which we identified uh, from the sdg agenda with this goals 
so in in brief we can say that a uh, book distribution for program for women and elderly cannot be uh, stand uh, which cannot be uh, traced as a different program which has a very close deep rooted connection with the sdg 17 goals so if we are continuing this program it it has a deep uh, influence among the rural areas of kerala and this can be taken as a model to other places also especially people in the rural and uh, rural areas this program can be successfully implemented next slide so with this point uh, we are concluding the session so as a, a closing note we could say that over 600 women librarians in kerala the project holds a significant importance in the realm of women's empowerment kerala where women's participation in the workforce is traditionally low uh, stands to benefit greatly from the initiatives that elevate women's roles and amplify their contribution by shedding light on the experiences of women librarian this study is actually not only highlighted the challenges but also underscore the importance of empowering women to particularly participate actively in the various fields of work so though such projects kerala can pave a way greater gender equality and inclusive development ensuring that women have equal opportunity to thrive and contribute to the society so uh, this is a part of the research what we have conducted and the details of the projects we are communicating with some uh, journals also so with that point we are concluding our presentation thank you so much everyone for so uh, listening and this is uh, as a part of our research she did a day in my life of uh, some woman librarian so this is the photo story of kp shiba of koriko district uh, so this is the photo story of her day in her life so that is what we did uh, in our work and now it's open for the question and thank you so much everyone for your patience listening thank you thank you thank you simeli and husna uh, for your sharing about the uh, walking woman librarian is really uh, interesting and and valuable so uh, let's come to the q and a section now Yes. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to tap in the um, chat box or the Q and A box. During uh, when, when we are waiting for for some questions, I, I would like to 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 ask the questions first. Uh, Simli and Husna, you mentioned about the um, book delivery uh, program is really. Uh, unique, I think, and um, uh, you also mentioned some uh, library events. So, um, uh, do you have any um, gathering or or library events uh, in, in your in in those libraries uh, who are, have the 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 program with the uh, working librarian? What kind of activities you 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 held in your library on top of the book delivery scheme? Yeah. <laughs> uh state library have several kind of program uh so there are a certain set of program a wide variety of program as i mentioned earlier uh they usually conduct uh book exhibition programs film festival debates and they have all the cultural festivals like the uh, onam vishu there are several uh, festivals of the people that is actually celebrated in the library and so as a part of this they have other meet program and sometimes they conduct a uh, workshop for students and they have separate uh, classes for those who are preparing for competitive examination they have separate sessions are providing and there are certain sessions of library providing uh, uh, activities like physical activities training or job training soft skill trainings and they have uh uh hostna if you have if you have any points you can also add the program so these are the set of programs which library provide and and it's from geographically from one place to other they have different set of program for example uh, 
uh, in Vainad where KP Radhamani was, uh, majority are tribal students. So during pandemic, what they did is uh, they actually conducted classes in the library where students don't have access to internet or Wi-Fi. Uh, libraries acted as a place for learning. So students from nearby, nearby places coming to library, attending their sessions, participating in the classroom. So that is one kind of activity which is uh, happening pandemic. Most of the libraries were converted into classrooms. And also another uh, notable example, during the flood, which happened in 2018 in Kerala, libraries are acted as a rescue place. They gave shelter to the people around the area. So that is another kind of like notable or commendable thing which library did during the flood. So uh, for us, just like a person goes to the coffee room to have a coffee in the morning, uh, <laughs> The culture is developed as a library, as a space for going and asking or having a normal conversation in the morning, a morning, a coffee shop kind of culture we developed in the libraries. So I think I answered your question, Priscilla. Yes, it's because you, you have a quite a close uh, social network because you, you deliver the books to the homes. So I think it's, it's really, really nice uh, or, or very, very good for, for you to for the library to um, uh, initiate some some gathering or, or some some yes yeah, some uh, unique activities uh, in the library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to our presenters again. It's been such a fascinating uh, presentation. We do have some questions coming through now, which I'll read out. We have one from Carolyn Rankin. Thank you for a very interesting research project. You've highlighted very positive links with a number of the SDGs. Do you have plans to continue or repeat the evaluation? Um, this is actually, uh, Husna was a master's student here last year. So uh, she actually started it as a master's project uh, for her final submission. So it, since it was quite interesting for in the limited time being, we actually interviewed 30 as a strata stumbling. So we have plans to continue this to the 600 women librarians in Kerala because uh, the state government is have some plans to close the program since it's completed 17 years. So we have a plan uh, to continue the study to the end of population and from region to region, how it works, maybe from district to district, uh, the cultural differences are there, the needs are different. So I think instead of covering the 30 walking librarian, we are developing into a greater number that have a greater effect. So definitely we have plans to uh, develop this research further. Thank you for the comment. And so another question, we've got a couple of positive comments. Alia V says to everybody, informative presentation and from Rama to Sinya, uh, to Nisa K to everybody, a very informative session. So that's great. And then Hamayun Kabir has asked how UN can help in this project, particularly in developing countries like India. Uh, uh, I'm not sure like how I should ask. We are all working uh, for equal accessibility or the democracy of information and uh, equal rights to information. So uh, with the limited funding, a government can do much things uh, in this place. So uh, if UN is supporting, that would be great and good. But even then, uh, equal access to resources or equal education, equal opportunities are rights of everyone. So we will stand for this and we will contribute in our own way what we can do to this. So that's fantastic. Thank you. I while we're waiting for more questions to come in, I actually have a couple of questions about the way the walking librarian service works. I was wondering, firstly, um, is the service exclusively outbound and taking books to people in the villages, or do the villages ever come to the library? That, and secondly, how do the members know what's available in the catalogue and what to request for the next time that the librarian visits? Okay. Uh, uh, 
first of all uh, the libraries which have a or a plus grade are only allowed with the working librarians and every working librarian is restricted to a an area it may be a, a two ward like uh, a local area for a, if for example if one library is situated in a particular place if there are two working librarians they will be covering uh, a kind of geographical area around the library and uh, they will be distributing every six day like first if we if they visited a house a particular day after seven day will be the next visit so by the time uh, they can either return the books or renew the books so that is how it works so if there are more walking librarians uh, there will be more area coverage so it depends on the grade of the library and also uh, and the, regarding the second question there are some problems like uh, the books which they can carry on a particular day is limited so a librarian and the walking librarian together select the books identifying the needs of the users and also um, on everyday visit people can demand particular books and the catalog is available to the readers so they are carrying the catalog uh, they can ask for a particular book even then since most of the rural libraries are not completely automated uh, carrying the catalog is not possible all the time so there is a limitations like among the books they have to pick one books and on demand only they will get the books or next week or next week and few walking librarians commented that especially the students who need certain books for completing their homeworks or assignments or their projects on demand she is providing books on early note like if she is coming for supposed to come on the next week she will come early to give that book so it's kind of a personalized customized service they are providing Thank you. What a truly wonderful service. And I so enjoyed hearing about uh, the the very close relationships that the librarians formed with the village uh, members, the, the community members and library members who they've been interacting with for years. It's such a wonderful story to hear. I have another question that's come through. What is the mechanism of ensuring that the books distributed are really read? Uh -huh. Uh, thank you, sir, for asking. He's my teacher also. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so, as of now, there is no such mechanism. But usually, uh, walking librarians share the story that um, they usually share the story. For example, a few books which are very popular, they will share the story. Like K.P. Radhamani once told me that one of the readers asked her to read a book because she can share the story with her. So we have an informal communication, what happened to that story, what happened later to that character. So especially in terms, in terms of fiction, there is a communication happening among the readers, among the walking librarian and the user. So in that way only we can share and there is no such mechanism. And also I think we should think of some plans like to mention or to give some appreciation for those who completed certain books. And she also told me during pandemic, uh, I showed an old man in the photo, right? In the video, there's an old man picking, collecting books. Uh, he read 350 books during pandemic. So he's a very old man. Uh, so this is a really a huge number. So that is the story. Yeah, I think you, you can have different kinds of activities in the future, like some uh, uh, sharing, sharing sections or, or reading club. Uh, when, when they uh, have have a meeting or some gathering physically in the library. Yeah, okay, so thank you so much. I think uh, it's come to the end of the webinar. Uh, so thank you all for your participation. Thank you, Simili and, and Husna. Uh, thank you. And it has been a pleasure to host this event and hope to see you again in our next webinar. Thank you yes. and goodbye. Thank you. Thank, you. A wonderful Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you, Antonia. Thank you. Thank you, Antonia. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>